Welcome back to my video series about how to build a sub 250 gram three inch freestyle drone for absolute beginners who have never built a drone before. This is a video series. So if this is the video you were looking for, then great. But if you just stumbled across this video, then feel free to watch it. But if it feels like you're coming in in the middle, that's why. There is a playlist linked in the video description below that has all the videos in this series. And if you're not sure what the heck's going on here, then you should go back to video number one and Hopefully it'll all make sense. A whole bunch of the content in the video that you're about to watch is borrowed from my previous build series where I built a five inch drone. I just couldn't bear to re-record hours and hours of content that was gonna be exactly the same, except instead of me holding a five inch drone in my hand, I'd be holding a three inch drone. I'm going back through these videos and anytime there is t a content that is unique to the three inch drone that you're building right now, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna record that and I'm gonna edit it in. But if there's a whole bunch of this video where I'm talking and I'm holding a five inch drone instead of a three inch, don't let it confuse you. It still applies to what you're doing. In this video, we're gonna do what I call buttoning up the build. And that's where you like put the top plate on, you mount the antenna, you just do those last minute little assembly things that you've been putting off until now. And I do wanna let you know this is an intentional choice to save the buttoning up of the build until after we've done all of the flight controller configuration and testing. Because it is super, super frustrating to build the whole quadcopter, put the top plate on, you've got a beautiful quadcopter, and then go do the beta flight setup and find out like you wired up the receiver wrong and the receiver doesn't work and you have to tear the whole thing apart and resolder the wires or something like that. So I always save this until after I'm sure that everything is working. And the other thing I wanna tell you is that right now I've got the Waxnell bird in front of me. This process should be very, very similar for all of the different videos transmitters you're working with, Waxnell 03 or analog, but if there's anything unique to any of them, I'll cut that in uh, as need be. Then we're going to get the top plate, and I always got to check to see if the top plate has a top or a bottom side. Sometimes the holes will be like countersunk here. They're not in this case, so we're good to go there. And does the battery strap need to like go through the hole? No, I don't think so. It's just going to come out the side, so that's no problem. These Slots are going to line up with the camera. Great. And we're going to get more of these little uh, four millimeter screws. These M3 screws. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is one, two, three, four. I'm short some M3 screws. How is that possible? Where have I misused them? No, that's, that's literally... Ah, they're on the table. So I've misplaced some of my M3 screws. Fortunately, I have an M3 screw assortment and I have spares. So uh, we're also gonna take this battery pad, pop out these inserts here and stick that down. The battery pad is important because number one, it helps keep the battery from sliding around in a crash. And number two, it, um, it, it provides some cushioning so the screw heads don't dig into the battery. And it looks like it's gonna line up with these holes here. Another thing we're gonna do before we fly is set the up tilt angle on this camera. Uh, you can imagine that if I had this camera facing straight ahead, then when the drone was standing still, I'd be looking straight ahead. And then as I pitch forward to fly, I'm kind of looking down at the ground and I'm flying. And then if I keep pitching forward to go faster and faster, I end up staring at the ground and I kind of don't, I can't see where I'm going. So I'm not going to do that. So typically what you'll do is you will up tilt that camera. And for beginners, I suggest an up tilt of about maybe 10 or 15 degrees at most. Um, because like if we take it to the other extreme and we up tilt the crap out of the antenna, if you're going slow with a lot of up tilt, now you're looking at the sky and kind of can't see where you're going. So the tendency is the more up tilt you have, the more you will tend to pitch forward so you can see where you're going and the faster your drone will fly. Less up tilt, you tend to go slower and have more precise control at low speed. More up tilt you t lets you go faster. So for beginners, I like an up tilt of about 10 to 15 degrees. If you have an up tilt that you know you like, uh, then set it. I like to be, yeah, that looks like close. To, I like to be about 30 degrees, maybe 35 degrees. Obviously you're not pulling out a protractor, you're just eyeballing. But um, if you go to fly and it feels like you want to go faster, but you can't see where you're going, crank your up tilt by another like five degrees. And if you want to fly and it seems like you want more control because you're going too fast, lower the up tilt. Let's see how we did hitting the sub 250 gram target. Uh, the quadcopter itself is coming in at 160 grams. That's with the walk snail video transmitter, of course. 
with props, we are at 165. There's gonna be a little bit of weight from the screws, but not that much. Here, let's put a bag of screws on here. That's 170, and guess what? The 650 milliamp hour 4S battery that we spec for this build specifically to hit the 250 gram target puts us right at 250 grams. And if you were to use a larger battery to get longer flight times, that would be between you and the FAA. That's not for us to decide. Seems like we hit the 250 gram target right on the nose. But don't go crazy with your double-sided tape and your, you know, like, you could see we could easily push it over. So if you really care about hitting that 250 gram weight, be careful, which you must, because that's why you bought this kit, right? You didn't just buy this kit so you could say, oh yeah, oh, this is under 250 grams, I'm compliant. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't use this 850 milliamp hour 4S for even longer flight time, putting you at 270 grams. No, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> Next, I wanna show you how to put the props on this bird. And if you think you know how to put on props, well, maybe you do, but um, a lot of people will never have put on this style of prop, which is called a T-mount prop. And a T-mount prop has a central hole here and then two outer holes. Uh, and it doesn't have a, a nut that goes on top like the props you may be used to. Here's how you install them. I want you to see that this motor has four screw holes in the top of the bell and one shaft. The prop is gonna slide down over the shaft on its central hole. And you may see that there's some friction there and you may be tempted to just push the prop down on top of that shaft and rely on that friction to keep the prop on and go fly. And there are people who do that, but the prop then pops off in flight and you, well, maybe lose your bird or something, you can't get it back. So I'm gonna recommend that you use the screws. These are M2 screws. Uh, these are look like they're six millimeters. I recommend seven millimeters because the six millimeter ones don't quite bite into the motor bell threads as much as I would prefer. Take a look. No, no, that's, that's clearly not right. That's not even a six millimeter. What is that? I don't know, but look, look, it doesn't even stick out at all. These are the screws that came with the motors. That's right. They're in different lengths. Okay, that's an eight. Is that gonna be too long? I'm concerned that's gonna be too long. Yeah. My concern is, so this is gonna go down into the screw hole. It's gonna line up with the hole on the motor and it's gonna screw down into the bell. If it goes too far in, then it's going to contact the windings and damage the windings. Let me double check for you. First, I'm just gonna line up the holes in the prop with the holes on the bell. I'm just gonna eyeball that. And then I'm gonna begin screwing this in and see how much clearance we have. No, it seems okay. I can see there's more than enough clearance. There's like a millimeter and a half to two millimeters of clearance. On some motors, the shape of the bell is such that if you have too long of the screw, an eight millimeter screw wouldn't work. Um, so I just have a great big bag of seven millimeters that I use, but these eights will be fine for you. So get the eight millimeter screws. They're the longest ones out of the bag of motor screws. And we're gonna screw them in like so. And when you screw them in, you may be thinking, well, how tight do I need them? And you, you need to get them like snug enough that they don't come out while you're flying, but if you tighten them down too much, you'll either explode the prop or you will strip the motor out. Now, the good news is that the motors have four sets of screw holes, but you only use two. So if you strip one of them out, now you know, and your motor isn't ruined. But if you strip two of them out, depending on which two you strip, your motor's ruined. So keep that in mind. Um, don't be tempted to use Loctite on these screws. Loctite will disintegrate. I put the prop on the wrong motor because I was so distracted by doing my demo. Loctite will disintegrate the plastic. Literally, the plastic will just crumble. It will dissolve the plastic and the props will explode. Do not be tempted to use Loctite to hold these on. It doesn't work. So that's how you install T-mount props if you've never done it before. And other than that, the installation of the props is the same as any other quad. Just make sure you get the props out rotation per our configuration. Now that the props are on, the next thing to do is to mount the battery. And you may be thinking, well, Bardwell, how hard could it be? You just take your battery strap, you pass it through the frame. You're gonna wanna make sure the grippy side is up so it's gripping the battery. And then you just, like slap the battery on, you strap it down, you're good to go. But there's complexities to it. Like if I were to do that and just strap this on, the first mistake that I'm making 
is that I'm only using one battery strap. And this, you can see, this is not a very like thick or heavy battery strap. Again, we're trying to stay under 250 grams. Oh God, I didn't weigh the battery strap. So are they gonna put me over 250 grams? Please, if hey, hey, don't, I need a second battery strap. Two battery straps is more than twice as strong as one battery strap. With one battery strap, the battery can shift. It can it can kind of lever, lever itself out in a crash. We always want to run two battery straps. So I'm going to push one toward the front, and I'm going to push the other one just back a little bit. As you're passing through here, make sure that you're not snagging any wires. You shouldn't be able to snag any wires because of the way we routed them, but we're going to... We've got this little waistline on the top plate that's intended for the battery straps. We're gonna put two battery straps. Actually would like it if that waistline was a little more extended so I could get these battery straps further apart because they work the best when they're spaced to the front and back of the battery, but we're gonna, we're gonna work with what we got. So now we've got the battery, right, mounted. And the next thing I wanna show you is when I put those battery straps on, I'm gonna like, I'm not just gonna kinda go and slap it down. I'm gonna really like, cinch it and strap it down. And I don't want this metal piece here at the corner of the battery because it'll sort of dig into the battery. So I'm gonna kind of pull that down and cinch it up good and tight. And that is a secure battery. That battery's not going anywhere. You will also see that I have mounted the battery in a particular way. I've mounted the battery here with the XT60 lead going up. And my thinking here is that I don't want to mount the battery in such a way that this battery strap or lead can get chopped by the props. So I want to keep that out of the way. And with it coming out the side here, that's not as unlikely as I might prefer. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually, yeah, I'm going to call an audible on this one because with this size of battery, there's plenty of room on the top, uh, top plate to come up here. I wasn't sure if I was going to cover these holes, but I'm not. Come on. Come on, buddy. Now, you want to be careful if you're pulling this through the carbon fiber. You don't cut the insulation on the edge of the carbon fiber. In fact, it would be a smart thing to do to get a little file and file down these sharp edges. Just, just barely knock the sharp edge off them so that they don't cut into that. But that actually seems like a great idea because now this is going to come up here and it's going to be protected from my props. And now, will that reach? Yeah, it will. So when we mount the battery, we want to mount it in such a way that the wires are not like loose and dangling and going to get chopped, but also we don't want the wires under tension because then like if I crash and the battery slides forward, boom, it may unplug the battery. So we want just a little slack in there. And the other thing I can do is I can take this battery strap and I can plug in and then I can cinch that battery strap down and pass the battery strap over that wire. And now that wire is restrained and safe and not going anywhere. So that's good. Um, the other thing I need to do is worry about the balance lead. Because in this case, it doesn't seem like my balance lead can get into my prop, but still I would want to protect it. One thing people will do is they'll pass the balance lead like so underneath the battery strap. That can work. Um, also notice that I'm passing the wires I'm not passing them between the battery and the strap because if I do that, then when I cinch the battery down, there's a lot of stress on that wire and that wire is sort of structural. What I wanna do is I wanna cinch down and then pass the wire in, un, over the Velcro. So it's restrained, but it's not under any stress. So that's how we're gonna think about this. We just wanna make sure there's no loose wires to get snagged or cut or chopped by the props, everything is, there we go. Good, good and ready to go. There we go, that's, I like that. I would fly like that. And that will become second nature. Every battery is gonna be different. They'll have a different length of wire and you're just gonna kind of look at it and go, okay, turn it this way, turn it that way, route the wires. But you always wanna do that, otherwise you're gonna chop those wires up. And then worst case is your quad falls out of the air or maybe even starts a fire. Best case is you come home and you're like, ah, I chopped my wire. In this video, we finished buttoning up our build. We installed our props, we installed our battery, and there's only one thing to do next, and that is take it out and go fly it. And we're gonna do that in the next video. See you there.